we're going to go ahead and get started. And so we have an action-packed um, afternoon, lots of information. So hopefully we will get all through this. So many of you are still introducing yourself, so thank you for everyone. Just It gives a little personal um, personal invite to, to Sarah and I myself. So thanks again for joining us for the Smart Table Virtual User Group. We are excited. Um, I have been facilitating these, these sessions for a while and decided to take a little bit of a break for the summer. And many of you um, in Texas, many schools started today was their first day. And I know from talking to some people around North America that other people started in last week or the week before. So we're glad that you took some time out today. We are recording this session. So um, if you are listening, hopefully um, not live, you're hearing this. So if we have, if you are listening as a recording of it, if you have any questions, please let us know how we can help you. But those of you that are listening live, we're going to talk about how you can ask those questions during our session today. All right, so let's keep going. So what are we going to talk about today? Well, this is our, um, our agenda. We're going to go through the introductions. Well, I've got some support documents. We're going to talk about what's new kind of with the table, but also with the table software in the toolkit. We're going to go back to the basics. So some of you may be very, very new to your table, or maybe you've um, new to the software, so I want to go give you some general overviews. There are some premium applications that we'll, I'll just um, share a little bit of and then talk about our resources in next sessions. So it's action-packed with lots of information. I will be sharing um, much, much of this with you. Um, Here's our contact information. So as I said, in the past, I've, I've uh, facilitated these webinars um, by myself. And Tara Mattingly, she is my co-host on the Educator to Educator webinars. And she's graciously, graciously helped supporting me um, with these webinars. So Tara, do you want to unmute and welcome everyone? Sure. Hi, everyone. Glad you joined. I saw uh, quite a few people from all around the U.S., so uh, great to have you all. And um, I'm here. I'll be trying to answer some questions, as Heather said, on the back while Heather is presenting. Perfect. All right. Thanks. So we've got our, our contact information on there. Tara and I both are in on Twitter, so if you're a Twitter follower, please please follow us and watch for other resources. So keep um, keep signing in and, and watching us. And, and I've got um, on the screen um, where some of the past sessions are that I'll repeat this. But I do have a, a YouTube channel that I post the archive of these sessions. We also are working on setting some things up in Course Park. And some of the resources are on my website, heathersdigitaldashboard.com. So thanks again for joining us. You know, there's lots of reasons why we do this, but one of the main reasons is networking with other users. So Tara is going to be, as she said, doing the back end, answering the questions. Um, if you do have questions, please don't hesitate. A lot of this will be new for you. But we also want to network. So if you are interested in sharing any best practices, we would love for you on future sessions to join us and um, talk about what some of the best practices that you're doing in networking. So that's how collectively we can share on this virtual webinar and create activity packs. So that's kind of our goals. How can you participate? And you've already figured that out in one way is there's a there's you've got a little panel and in that panel you can click on the little arrow and it can collapse and um, and expand your um, panel, sorry, and then you have a raise your hand feature. So if you would like to, that it, we don't get a lot of people wanting to do this, but if you would like to raise your hand and ask a question verbally, you, it works better if you have a headset. So if you have a headset or making sure that your mic and, mic and your head speakers are all working, we would love that. There is that question box. So Tara will be watching in the back. If you have any questions, she'll do her best. And if it's a question that she thinks the whole audience will benefit from, then she'll interrupt and we'll ask it um, out loud. And it is being recorded. I do have the recording going, so you can go back and listen to the archive if there's something that you missed. 
So I wanted to start off with um, just this. So in the past, we've had um, lots of resources that I've created. Lots are on the web. But in discovering recently just how to best use the table, the table software, I wanted to really highlight these support documents. And I think before we go any further, I want you to see, because it's, there's really, I can do so much in an hour, but this document that I want you to, to, to show you, if you haven't visited with it, to it yet, this is a place that you need to definitely look for. So if I'm going to go out to my website, um, and I'm going to um, scroll back up here, and I'm going to click on the support tab. And what I want to really drive you to is um, the support tab. And you know, you might think it's under resources, but this is one way and an easy way to find the resources for the smart table. So I'm starting with this just. So if you get lost or you need some reference points, here is where you can find it. So I'm going to refer back to this a lot during our session today, but I want to go here first. So if I go to Software Downloads, and it's going to pull up everything. Now, those of you that are familiar with some of our products, you'll know that these are all our products. I'm going to keep scrolling all the way down till I can come down here to our smart table. And when I click on here and I go to choose a version, I'm going to click on the smart table software. So it's right now it's 3.0 that I'll talk about that. Now here's one of the benefits of this. So if you notice, it says Smart Table Software, and you have Support Documents, and you have Product Download. So right now I'm on the Product Download page. I'm going to click on Support Documents, and it's going to bring up a bunch of how-to articles. But what I really want you to look at is the product guides and the curriculum quick reference sources. So this right here is the most valuable resources that I have found. I mean, besides some of the other things I've created and some of the training resources, these two, these two items right here are really, if I go to the Smart Table, I need to open up my pens, the Smart Table software and the 2.5 User's Guide, or Smart Table software or Smart Table Toolkit 2.5. So whether you're a brand new user of the table or a user that a, a table user for quite some time, I think that you'll find these documents to be very robust and really accessible to you. So if I come in here and it's downloading, this might be something you might even want to print. Um, you know, I'm not a big, I don't endorse a lot of printing, but this might help you into, into knowing more about the table and the table um, toolkit. So if you notice, you'll see that it's just a really nice and robust, um, it goes through the table, it goes through the toolkit. You can see, let me make this a little bit bigger. So you get started, I mean it's really nice because you get started down here, you're going to find out, here's the teacher mode. I'm going to talk about a lot of this today and show you some images, but you might get stuck. So notice that it's got these great images. So this is really going to be a benefit to you, especially if you're using. Now, if you're using the, I'm talking about the Smart Table 442 a lot, but this will help you if you have the 442, the new table, or the old table, a lot of this will be similar. So if you need some, some other guides as far as the Smart Table 230, some of the things are a little bit different, but not so much. So I really wanted to guide you there. So and then I'm going to share this file out with everyone. So if you're wondering, you're thinking, gosh, I'm taking, trying to take, um, oh, let's see. Somebody, Tara, somebody says they can't listen to you. Maybe their speaker is not on. I'm hoping that everyone else can hear me. I can hear you. Yeah, oh, okay. I, just, I just saw that come in. Okay. Yeah, I just happened to glance over. So there, they might have their microphone down. So I just happened to look over there. Um, okay, good. 
Um, all right, so so the so that's what I wanted to tell you about that. So I will be sharing this file as well with everyone. So hopefully that will help. Let moving on, I'm just gonna give you some basics. So we're gonna start off. This was a back to the basics, so I really wanted to give you some basics as as to some terminology, some help. So if this is I apologize if you're beyond this, but we're in kind of a transitional phase. So I hopefully um, this may be a review for some, but then for others it might not be. So bear with me for just a second. I do reference this the 230i, so this is my 230i, and this is our new ta table, the 442i. So some of the basics are on your computer, the Smart Table Toolkit is something that you'll load on your table, I mean on your on your computer, and I have that loaded on mine, so I have it right here. This is my Smart Table Toolkit. That goes on to your that goes on to your computer where you can actually build activity packs. So that's one thing. There is on the table, on both tables, the 442i has USBs on both sides. So there's USBs on this side, and then there's USBs on this side. On the, on the 230i, there's two little USB ports right here. So when we talk about the loading of things, there's options. You can load things with a USB drive, or now there's a way that you can actually access the Internet and, and access items that way. So you can always download that things to the USB and place them into and add them to your table, or you can access. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. But I wanted to distinguish between, so I'll reference both things, but everything that I'm going to tell you, most everything that I'm going to tell you works for if you have a 442i table or a 230i table. So, and then the toolkit is it's a computer that so that's based if you have a Windows computer or a Mac computer the software is cross-platform all right so some other basics so I'm this I'm gonna start off talking about the table specifically about the table so specifically about the table so you have two basic modes when you turn on the table you will chances are see this or see a something that is similar to this. This is called the student mode. So this is the mode that you would most likely see. This is the default application that will load when you when you turn on the table. This will happen unless you've had your table and you've changed it. This is the student mode. And then we have what we call the teacher mode. So the teacher mode allows you to complete some some changes to the table that we'll talk about. So like if you wanted to change the volume, you might be changing the volume here. If you wanted to change the number of learners, if you needed to calibrate, both tables have this option. The 230i and the 442i have different calibration options of how you would finish that out. So on the on the 230i, you might have to calibrate it a, a little more often just because of the, the different kinds of technology. But on the 442, it's a little bit of it's different, but it explains that in that support document. Um, I'm going to refer to the different how do you know what version of the software you are using from right here. And then the center point is where I would choose our activities. So this is your main one. How do you change out? And we'll talk about that. There are some settings that you can change as far as how do you want your images to show whether it's a 16 by 9 or a 4 by 3 ratio. So that is our that is our um, our teacher mode and our student mode. So the teacher mode allows the teacher to, to change things out. Typically, the students would not ever go into this mode. Um, so, so the students would always see that student mode, that default, or whatever the teacher wants those students to interact with. So going back to the software, when I went to my website and I need to update my software, so there's a couple of ways that you can update your software. So I can come to this 
this location, remember it's under the software, under the support tab, software downloads, and I can download it here. If your table, and this is for both tables, so let me go back to my note. If your table is running, if it's updated to version 2.6 or above, so we've had 2.6 and then now we have 3.0. If your table is running that and you connect to the internet, you will get, you can click on that icon and you can do an automatic update straight from the table when you're connected to the internet. This is all based on the internet. So you can use a USB or do a direct download if your table is running version 2.6. So you might say, okay, how do I know that? Well, if you go back to that teacher mode and you go to this icon right here, that green icon, this, this will show up, this little icon right here. If you have the check for updates, you can go to that technical support tab right here, and if you have check for updates, then you can tell which version of the software you're running from. Let me go to a highlighter here. So you can tell right here which version. So this, this image came from a table that's running 3.0. If you're running version 2.6 or higher, you will have this check for updates. And you could, if you're connected, you can update your table from that point um, if you're connected to the internet. If you are running a previous version, 2.5, I believe, or anything lower than 2.6, you will need to do a manual update. And what I mean by that is, remember I told you that you sometimes you might have to use a USB? So you'll need to download the software from that download page put it on your USB and then plug it into your table and a, a box will show up that says it looks like you want to update the software and it will update, it will remove the old software, put the new software on and then from that point on you will only have to um, update, you could update that, that without going through that USB drive. But the caveat is to that is you need to be in version 2.6 or above. So hopefully that, that makes sense. So that's where you would get your smart table software. So this goes with the 230i or the 442i. Same process. Um, you do need to plug in. So the 230i, the US, the, the Cat5 cable is inside. So you would plug the Cat5 cable if you needed to hardwire you could do that or you can connect your table wirelessly. Some of the early, early, early versions of the table might not have a wireless um, connector. So you might need to check to see if you can get on your internet. I would recommend exploring that option because some of the things that you're going to hear me say, there's some really quick and easy ways to add things to the table through the internet. It's kind of that instant download. I also wanted to tell you that in, in September, there will be an update, so, be, so stay tuned. So I would recommend go ahead and update to 3.0 of your table because in September, you will be able to access this 3.1, which will have some, a few other, other little updates to it. So, um, but if right now 3.0 is, is, I would recommend doing what you need to do to get 3.0. 3.1 won't be as significant, but 3.0 is definitely, uh, I, I highly encourage you to do that. All right. Tara, any questions that I need to? Are we good? Nope, we're good. Okay, perfect. Okay, so... Um, the other thing I wanted to tell you is that, as I said a second ago, the the you can have wireless the the U I mean the Cat Five the computer inside of the table you could um, plug in that if you needed to hardwire you could do that the the um, Cat Five the internet cable for the for the 442 is right underneath by the on off so it doesn't look like I drew that right there but it's underneath. 
So if you were to remove this little panel right there, it's, there's, a, there's a port underneath the table that could run through. Um, depending on your wireless speed, it would depend on if you needed to be hardwired. Do you have to be hardwired for everything? No, but, but depending on your wireless speed would determine whether or not um, you can do that update. So the Smart Table Toolkit. So the toolkit, as you can see, this is what goes on to your computer. It hasn't been updated um, recently. So you should be running, if you can look at mine, I'm running, if I go to my little About tab when I have here, I'm running 2.5. And I could check for updates. I'm not going to do that right now because I know that that's the current version or 2.5 is the current version. So, so if you haven't updated your toolkit in a while, um, why would you want to have the toolkit? Well, you might as you, as next month we're actually going to build something, so you might want to build an activity pack. You don't have to because there's over 1900 activity packs that you can use, but you might want to. So I went to the About tab, went to Technical Support. You can also change your language here and things. So these are, this allows you to know um, all about the specifics of your, of your table. So that's my toolkit. The toolkit is cross-platform. It's Windows and Mac. So if I were to, um, I would download the Mac version for my Mac, but I could open up whichever, if I went to a school that had Macs, I could just take that file and open it straight up on my computer without doing any, I don't have to convert it or do anything. So it's cross-platform. I know that sometimes you have schools that have Macs at school, but they or PCs at school, but they might have a Mac at home. And a teacher, a teacher doesn't need a code like you do in, uh, well, not anymore, but you don't need any codes or anything for the toolkit. So if you're wondering about that, that is also, if I were to go to the software, the support tab, and I go to software downloads, scroll down again to the table, and this time I would go to Smart Table Toolkit. So right here, so make sure that you differentiate between the table is what goes on the table, the toolkit goes on your computer. So you don't put the toolkit onto the table. You don't build your activities from the table. And then I just, this I will share this file, but as you, I set what version, so you can tell which version you're running. So how do you get between the teacher mode and the student mode, or back and forth? So there's a couple of ways that you can do this. So one way is, is you can plug in that USB. When you plug it into one of those ports, I would recommend you plug it into these, these two, there's this side or the other side on this table, or either one of these ports will work. But um, you plug in, and when you do, you do, it's going to automatically switch from the student mode to the teacher mode. And so you can, that's one way to do it. And so then when you're done doing your selections, then you pull out the USB and it'll switch back and forth. So if you need to change something, plug it in, change what you need to change, and then remove the USB and it'll switch between the student mode and the teacher mode. There is another way if you didn't have a USB or you wanted to try this, um, you can use your five fingers. Now I will recommend based on some, some people that I've watched do this. So, you, so basically you're going to take, um, you have to have two hands to do this. So I have the, the hands to kind of show this. So you're going to take one hand, and I'm right handed, so typically I use uh, my left hand because if you notice the cog right here. So here's the on off button of the table. The cog is going to show right down opposite of that. So if your table was flipped around and the on off button was here, then the, t the cog would be right here. So what's going to happen is you take five fingers, you press, you kind of, um, I've showed people kind of how to, cut, they, you kind of cup your hand a little bit and all five fingers have to press simultaneously. Don't, don't lift up one. They all have to press and they're going to press down for about 10 seconds. You don't want some student figuring this out because you don't want them to, to be um, 
changing your activity packs. So you press down five fingers and press and hold, and when you do that, this little cog down in the corner is going to show up. So with the left hand, if, if I do it this way, I just find it. this is how I do it. I press with my left hand. With my right hand, I press on that little cog. So I don't lift my left hand up until I press down on the cog, and then it'll switch into student mode. And then I go back when I'm finished doing what I need to do, I'll press on the cog and it'll take me back out of the mode. So if you have a table, you can do this onto the 230i and the um, 442i as well. Now I believe that this feature, if you haven't updated your table software in quite some time, this probably won't work. So if you're, I'm going to just say if you're lower than 2.6, this may not be a feature in that. So if you're at 2.6 or above, you'll have this, this feature. But if you're below, you need to get it up to date, and then you'll have all of these, these options. So the USB and the press and hold. You'll have to figure that that's one of those things that's hard to kind of tell you the right pressure and press, because I can do it just fine, but then my um, I worked with someone the other day and she struggled a little bit and it took us about five attempts to the, she kind of figured it out on her own how, because I couldn't really tell her, except I noticed that if your fingers lift up in any capacity, then it doesn't have that, maintain that, that absolute pressure. It doesn't have to be a hard pressure, it just has to be consistent pressure. So you might want to try that. So two hands and then you will um, you'll be able to to um, work with that. So the I, I saw a good question. So the, there isn't really there's an on button on both the tables, not an off button. So since we're on this page right here, so the on button that so Suzanne, so uh, uh, thanks for that question. But the on button on the 230i is if I come back up here. So there is right here. There's a little button that's right by the USBs over here. So that's your on button. And on the table, I can't ever remember which end. So there's the on button is on one of the ends, where if you have a smart document camera, there's also a port on the end. I don't have a picture. Next time, maybe I'll have a picture of that. So there's not an off button. The off button is, let's see. So the off button is where you, um, at the top, that's your off. That's not really a button, but that's how you will turn the table off. So one of the recommendations I always make to teachers is if the students accidentally, as you can see it, it's there. If the students accidentally select that button right there, it gives them about 20. It doesn't instantly turn off. So it's not really an off button, but it's an, it's an off um, icon. So it gives them, and so I would tell them how to cancel that and what that means. And I've done that with really little ones that totally get that. They, they know what on and off is. All right. So good question. Okay. So moving right along. So hopefully that helps you. So some of the things in the teacher menu, I explained a little bit of, about it, but I wanted to go in just a little more detail, and then I want to refer you to those support documents. So that Calibrate, the Calibrate is just like if you have a smart board and is where that touch is. On the 230i, there are, there are 20 cameras around the perimeter of the table. So you, you're orienting to make sure that, that all of those cameras are are watching and connecting. So one nice thing about that is that if one of the cameras were to stop, the others will compensate for it. The 230i uses a different kind. It has actually a, a camera inside of the table. So the, the calibrating is, um, is a little different. You press on each like you would a board, and then you drag out with each icon. Um, on that tape, that particular table, and it's because of the of the technology of the table, so it will identify. They're not hard, but if you need a, a visual of that, let me know. Um, your learners, you can change your learners up to eight, so it's just a plus and a minus. The new, the, the 442 um, has 90% larger space, so that um, ha obviously has more room for kids, but it's, you're still at, it's your management style. The volume, you change it, you 
to the dial up and down. And then as I said, the settings, let me show you. I have a picture of that in just a second. And then the, if you need to update your table. And then this is where you choose your activities or change your applications. I have a picture of when you go to the settings. So the table, the 240i is a 4 by 3 ratio and the 442 is a 16 by 9. So if you press on that, it'll actually show. So some of you might have um, seen some activity packs that show and have a little black bar. That was because they were created. You could change, they were created for that, the 4 by 3 ratio. You could change the aspect ratio, but sometimes things will stretch a little bit. So you, you can go back and forth. Um, the 442, though, the applications and the activities that have been created recently are created for in that 16 by 9. They'll still work either or. So just a reminder, this is the student mode. As we get into the next, um, the next piece is third-party applications. So third-party applications, um, these, this is the student mode. So the, this is called an activity pack. So an activity pack can have eight applications. So if I, if I really think about this and I, and I ha think about this, I could have my activity pack. Then I can have applications, and then I can have activities within my application. So this is an activity pack right here. This whole thing is an activity pack. Each one of these is an application, and within each application, I can have activities. So this one is addition, and addition could potentially have seven or eight activities, depending on whoever the author is, that authored this, this activity pack. So you can have a maximum of eight applications in any one activities packs. So when someone looks out on the exchange, if I were to go to the exchange, which we'll do, unlike notebook where it's one lesson that might have eight or ten page, these activity packs can be very robust, very full of multiple levels of activities. So we do also have some premium activities packs, and we also have some activity packs that can download, and then we'll talk a little bit about those in customizable and not customizable. So in the new version that's coming out, 3.1, we have two really new cool applications, Scrapbook and Symphony. And so they will be actually part of the default activity pack that shows up the first time you start the table. So it will still have eight. It's just those will be default applications now. So if you, and I do get a lot of teachers that say, you know, some of these activities are too hard. Well, remember, that's the default. That comes preloaded you can access the exchange and, and open up any activity packs. That's just the default. So it's kind of like an, um, a computer with maybe a welcome activity or something. So this is like the welcome activity. All right. So I'm going to switch gears just a little bit, and I'm going to go into, um, into the third-party applications because that's going to kind of lead me into some of the other things. So I, I want to talk about third-party applications because there is now, we can now um, do a mul multiple different things. So third-party applications are applications that allow, um, there are, you know what, let me switch, hang on, and I'm going to, whoops, let me do this. Let me go here and go out to the Smart Exchange. That will do a better job. So if I come into the Smart Exchange, if you haven't joined the Smart Exchange, I highly encourage you to do that. Number one, because it's a robust um, group. I, I think I've used that word a bunch today. So it's, there's 70,000 pieces of content that you can access to, um, to download. So Here's, I've joined, and so if I come out here and I go to file type. So file type will allow me to see what's available, and I want to focus on these two. So smart table activity packs are those activity packs that are available to download. Now, remember, 
that activity packs can be accessed straight from the table just like you can do and update your software. So what I mean by that is if I come here and I choose this purple icon in the center, let me stretch this out so you can see. This screen is going to show up. And in this screen, you can actually search. These are things that are, that when I'm, con now I'm connected to the internet for this image. So things that are already on the table are going to show up right here under table content. Some of you may not have anything showing up here because you haven't downloaded anything. So those are things, once you download pieces, they will show up here. You can also download, and we'll talk about that, things to a USB and add them. So if you have a, an activity pack, you can download it and add it here. You can also, when you're connected to the, the Internet, you can access from the Smart Exchange, and you can instantly see what's available. The thing right now is, is that if you said, oh, I want to open up colors, you would, and you haven't really viewed it, you're going to have to open it up and view it and then decide if that's the one you want to do. So what I recommend is if I go back to the Internet, whoops, and I go to here and I go and I type in colors, So everything's going to be brought up that has anything to do with colors. So when I come right here, notice I have seven smart table, um, no, I have 208 activity packs that have to do with colors. So I'm going to have to find that one that has to do, so I might want to limit it um, by grades, or I might be able to find you know, I know that it's uh, pre-K, K, so if I start putting some limiters, then I start, I can find, let me go back to activity packs, and I can come through. Just, that, there's a lot of activity packs that have to do with colors. So I might want to maybe investigate it a little further to find the one that I actually find. But the reason I'm showing you this is because if you found one that you really like, but you really want to decide, you know, what is it really about before you added it, you might want to do and do a quick review of it. Or maybe you can do some editing, a little bit of editing this way if you have the Smart Table Toolkit loaded on your computer. So from, from, so from here, I'm just going to be able to, when I click on this, when I click, click on this, it's going to ask me and say, what do you want to do? And I don't have it highlighted, but there's an open button right there. And you can open this activity pack right here. And then it will have this right here will be your current activity pack that you have. It's almost like a content manager. So this is new, so no longer, if you guys are familiar with that black box that you had to scroll down, we don't have that black box. Once you update to the newest software, you will get this, this content manager right here. So hopefully, whoops, that helps you in, in knowing some of the, the key features about um, this. There are, and I'll talk about third-party apps in just a second, but there are um, activity packs and applications in right here. There is a search bar. So if you want to search, there is a search bar right here that you can, um, that you can place whatever your search is. If you're searching for animals or whatever, a keyboard will pop up. You can filter by specific grades and subjects and countries. So you can do all that searching. You just won't be able to see and do a preview of it. So that's really good um, for that, um, for that adding. That is, that is if you are connected to the internet. So if you're connected to the internet, the Smart Exchange, otherwise it'll say you're not currently connected and you'll need to do the long download process. So hopefully that makes sense. It's 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 very I can tell you that 
the the um, the toolkit and the actions are very repetitive. So let's go and talk about some, some more about this, the third-party applications. So if I come over here or back out to my exchange, and I'm going to go back out. So this is the exchange. If you don't have Notebook, I did a quick link to Notebook. If you don't have Smart Notebook open, you can go to exchange.smarttech.com. And this is where, remember that you'll need to join or you won't be able to down live. So let's pretend that I don't have the internet right now. And I want to get some activity packs loaded onto my table. So, and I, I can do a general search. So I can go here to activity packs and just do a general search. Or, so if I wanted to, um, I want to see if there is anything about math. So I'm just going to search math. Remember that it's going to bring up every single thing that has to do with math. And the table only reads smart table activity packs. So I want to scroll down because I do get questions a lot of times as people have added notebook files. The table will read notebook files, but they have to be part of the activity pack. So if they're just by themselves, it won't read them, but part of the activity pack, they will, it will read them. So if I look, here is a whole bunch of activity packs that have to do with math. So maybe I wanted to limit it and say, oh, you know what, I am, I am a grade two teacher. I'm going to go a grade above and a grade below, and I only want math. And I'm going to search go. Yeah. Now, if I was a different in a different country, I might want to change this um, to a different country and then select it that way. I don't know. Um, there is language support. I don't know how many activity packs are in those other languages, but you could always customize them. So now I've gone. That big list is down to 28 that that go with my parameters. From here, I can do a preview. Some of them will do movie previews. So if they have the smart logo there, you might get a movie, a little video preview. If you don't have a movie preview, you can click on them and you can click on your little arrow and go through and see um, if what it's about and if it's something you're interested in. So that's how I find activity packs. Um, and what I would do with with those, if I don't have the internet, I would download it. I'm going to save it. If you wanted to see what it is even inside the toolkit, you could open it. But if, well, let's just open this and then we'll, let's see. So I'm going to open it and it's going to tell me, because I it says you must close the toolkit because you can only have one table toolkit open at a time. So let me click on that again and let me click. So I can only have one table toolkit um, instance open and it is going to open and here was that math counting activity pack. So notice it has one, two, three, four, five activity ac applications, sorry. Application. So the activity pack is called mouth counting. It has one, two, three, four, five applications. And then it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight under paint. Hot spots, let's see how many activities under it. So this one only has one, but if you liked it, you could add more. So next month, we're going to talk about adding more. Now this one, though, this one has four activities inside of that one application. So addition, addition is that application that's kind of random. So you set the, the what kind of counting options. And the toolkit is very, is very um, linear. So it's you do this one and then you do this. So that's how I kind of read um, that. So that's my, that's my um, activity pack on mouth counting. If I wanted this, what I would do is click save and I would save it to my USB. From that point, I'm going to go back to my table file. When I plug this in my USB, I'm going to go here and I'm going to click on the USB icon and 
that math counting will show up under there. Once I open it, it's going to now be part and it's going to live. It's like adding or saving something to your computer. There's a computer inside of this table. Well, both of the tables have computers. So now that one activity pack is now part of the table content. So that's how that works. And I'll talk about this clipboard in just a second. All right. So there are third-party applications. So there are some third-party applications. So I'm going to go back to my home page of my Smart Exchange. I'm going to go to File Type. I'm going to go to Smart Table Applications. Smart Table Applications are applications that some are customizable, some are not customizable. And some, what you can do is from the table you can actually open applications up as a standalone activity pack in some, in some of them. So you can just work with them. There is no customizing. And then some of them you can, I'll show you, you can actually add them to be part of your own activity pack. But if I'm on my table and I see an application, Bubble Phonics, I will see this when I'm connected to the web on my table and it'll say Bubble Phonics and it'll open up. There's no downloading. It's, well, it's going to download, but it's not, you're not, you're not having to customize, you're not having to add anything, it's just kind of a seamless process. So I would click on that link inside of the ta on the table and it's going to open up that Bubble Phonics um, application. So you can see, there. here's a little trick, even if I go back to the activity packs, if you think, gosh, there's 1,900 of them, I wonder which ones are new. Because when you look at this, this is the first one that always shows up. So if I click on newest first, guess what? I can see which have been loaded most currently. And notice that at the end of it, it says Smart Table Activity Pack. That's what you want to make sure that you have is that Smart Table Activity Pack. If I scroll through, then I can do some, some limiting on, the, on my search strategies. I can look to see which has had the most downloads, most recommended, those kinds of things if I wanted to. So these are activity packs. Let me go back to the applications. And if I go to newest first, there are some, these are called premium content. So some of them are, are available for free and some are fee-based. So you can notice over in the side, you can see, so like this one's $39. So there's, we have a store that you can download. But there's many of them that are, that are free to download. So if you were to be on your table and you updated your software, you could find and search for object sort, click on the, down, the download button, and it's going to automatically open on your table and be ready to rock and roll. Now, if you didn't have the internet, this is where you would download plug it in, and then that I, that um, this little box will show up, and it will show up, and it'll sh and you can download that, and it'll, it'll open for you. It's one of those things that's kind of tricky to, to say and to, until you practice it, but it's a very seamless process. So, so there are these. I wanted to highlight two that are really nice. So there's two. There's one called Symphony. Symphony, if you're music or if you're not a music teacher and you just want to have your students as a center to create music, this is a really nice application. You will see that you can choose which instrument you want, and then the students can actually start. They can record their music, and it will record it, and it saves as, if you know anything about music, it will save it as a MIDI file that you could save, put it on a USB drive, and then um, plug it into your computer and play it on, from a WMV file. So that's kind of nice. Um, and so in it, you can have your notation view. So you have drums. Here's the save file, what it looks like. So you would save that to your USB. So really nice. It's, um, it's a pretty incredible little application. Um, the music is, is really nice. And then when you play it, it'll actually show you the notes down here. So we hope to have some examples of some things, but that's downloadable to either download with your USB and then 
uh, plug it into the table and add it or to do it straight. The other one is called scrapbook. So a lot of people have been asking about applications that will allow kids to create. So with different artifacts, a, a student, let's say for this particular instance, they, they're doing a pirate unit or there's a theme about pirates. A teacher could have downloaded a bunch of different pictures, plug in that, let me show you, um, let's see. Yeah, so you plug in the USB and you can actually choose pictures from a USB or if you're on the internet, you can choose from straight from the Smart Exchange. You can add labels, you can draw, and then what's coming out, I told you that version 3.1 is coming. So version 3.1 will now, now allow the teacher to export that creation as a PDF. So to show that students work and to show maybe you have some specific targets that you wanted. So you can have pictures. This is called scrapbook. So you can add labels that you can move around. So there's different backgrounds that the students could choose. Like notice this has got um, this has got like a gray paper, I mean a brown paper. There's a little eye in the center here that you can lock it so that the students, other students can't interact with it. And then it, with that 3.1 of the software, there will be an export to a PDF version. So then they would save it to that USB and the teacher could print it. So those are both available from the Smart Exchange. You can see new is first, or I can do scrapbook and do a search. Remember, same thing. I want to, I'm going to go to here's my smart table application, or I have there's some smart um, note. Oh, these are notebook lessons. So see, I could I don't want to let download those. I only want this the at table application. All right, so I wanted to kind of that's this is what the the download looks like on your on your table. So if you're on the table and you wanted to, I'm watching my time. Um, let's see, can you change the order of the activities within the application? Yes. Um, so I'm gonna I'm going to show a real brief thing. Um, you can so um, you have to do it in your toolkit. You can't do it on the table. So here's whoopsie. Let me do this. So here's grouping this application. This is what an application would look like. So so right there. That's that's an application. Here are activity packs and see where it says download. That's what you would download. And you would click on that, and that's going to be the activity that's going to show live right here. So, but see how I'm on the Smart Exchange. If I have that downloaded to the USB, then it's going to show from the USB, or it'll show once you've downloaded it. It'll be part of your table content. So that's kind of the the process. But um, you can see that these are this is how it works, and there's that application. So pretty nifty, pretty easy. I encourage you to have the, the table connected to the internet. So that's that ease of access to those. And then the last thing is, is that if you didn't, if you needed to download from the table or from the internet, you would download it, you would get a little icon, and then you would add it to, you would put that little icon onto your USB to add it to the table. So if you have to manually do all those things, that's those are the steps. The other piece that you'll want to do is I'm going to talk about this next time is I have if you are looking at my screen this is what my toolkit looks like and I've added the so let me let me go to new I'm going to do note don't save so this is what we're going to do next time is we're actually going to kind of build if you're interested in building so I have already added scrapbook to my activity um, so I know that I want my kids to do something with scrapbook I'm gonna add puzzles so this is where you would add I know I have a notebook file that I'm gonna add so these are your very basic steps but to get those applications it's pretty easy all you have to do is if I click on don't save I'm just gonna show you if I go I've downloaded something already and I go in here, and I'm I've I'm got this. Um, oh, let's see. 
I don't think I had flashcards. Um, if I download, if I click on flashcards, notice I clicked on it. It's the same for both the table and the toolkit. And it's going to add, hopefully it's going to add this. It's thinking about it. Whoops, let's see. There it is, flashcards right there. So that's how I, if I wanted to build my own activity pack, and um, we'll talk about customizing those. But that's really how I get, then I can build my own activity pack that has those specific to what I want to use. So I basically just had that little icon that I downloaded. I don't have the toolkit open, and it will open it for me. So I've got to save. If I don't have the internet, I find that little download. I put that download, like flashcards, I put that on my USB, and I uh, plug it into my table. So hopefully that made sense. Um, next month, we're going to construct. So Lynn, in answer to your question, so if I, um, I, can, I can't uh, change the order on the table, but if I have activities, I can change the order here. So if I had multiple activities, and then I knew that I'm, I do activity one and two today, I might want to reorder those down. So that's, that's what I can do. Um, all right. So we'll talk about that next month. So hopefully, I know it's almost 5 o'clock, so there are some customizable, so some of the third-party apps that are free are not customizable, so you can just add them or use them straight on the table. There are some that are customizable, so if you click on one, and if I go to flashcards, this one's customizable. But I might do, I might have materials mix up, and materials mix up is not customizable. So it'll work on the table, but I can't really add any or change anything. So you might see that. Just cleaning, I wanted to put that just alcohol free. Um, I've gone to a bunch of tables that are pretty icky and grimy, and so household glass cleaner will work. Turn your table off, both, both kinds of tables, and clean them that way. Don't forget about the Smart Exchange. They're in the file that I'll share. There's a bunch of resources that will help you working with the table. We'll, we'll highlight those next month. I do have on my website um, under there's some you can go back and see some of the past sessions. So under Smart, so don't this educator to educator we're moving, but here are the past sessions, the Smart Table Virtual User Group. So you can go back and see some of these sessions that I've done that might help you to, to help. Now, some of it might, you know, as the older you get, some of the software changes are there. I have a website. Um, I will share that. It's heathersdigitaldashboard.com. I shared it at the beginning. Here it is right there, that some of this stuff is linked. And last but not least, I want to um, share... Um, Let's say thanks to Tara for running the background and answering the questions. And the next session we're going to have, they're all okay. on the they're all on the last Thursday, right, Tara? Or last Monday of the month. Correct? Yep. That's it. September 30th. And what we're going to do is we're going to have the Smart Table Toolkit Exploration. So if you have any questions, if you have technical questions, please refer to that support document. If you have any other questions, Tara and I can help you um, if you get stuck. We do have some, some programs. I know people have asked about updating their tables. So if you ever have a question about that, we can connect you with your salesperson. So we do have those programs. Um, stay tuned. Watch for updates and um, watch some of those past sessions. You'll get a follow-up message with this file and the recording link. So it, it's 5 o'clock. I hope that I didn't just kind of, I went right through it pretty fast, but hopefully that helps you. It was a back to the basic. Next month I um, hope to have someone, uh, a teacher, sharing with her experiences with the table. If you would like to share your experiences, please let me know. I would love it. And um, with that, unless you have any specific questions, we are going to end. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks, thanks. Heather. Great yep. job. Thanks, Tara. Thank you for yep. everyone. Talk to you next month. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.